Welcome back to the next session that is uh, lecture 20 of uh, this fourth week lecture. As you remember we have been talking about different approaches to uh, performance evaluation as a part of the PMS system and we talked about that the evaluation can be done through not only a single rater, but a multi rater approach also. For example, in a single rater approach what happens? Either the individual itself evaluate his performance that is what we know as self appraisal we have already talked about it. Next we have talked about the traditional measures of performance that is super immediate supervisor measuring the performance of the individual. Right. You can also involve peers in the process. Right. You can also involve subordinates in the process. Right. So, as you move up in try to include more and more stakeholders in the process, you are increasing the responsibility of each stakeholder in the process. Right. For example, if you are including supervisors, individuals and self both and subordinates, then this is it is known as 180 degree appraisal. Right. But in the process for including peers as well as customers internal or external customers, then this is known as 360 degree appraisal. Now, when I am talking about 360 degree appraisal, it is something like this. The individual is here who is going to be evaluated about his performance and then you have these four other stakeholders in the process who are going to evaluate performance. Here you are having supervisor. Here you are going to have subordinates who are going to be involved in the process. Here you are going to have peers and here you are going to have customers. And this could be internal or external, right. For example, if you are, if you are going to evaluate the HR jobs then you can go for internal customers or the employees being a part of the system or they could be a stakeholder. But for example, a marketing job you can have an external customer who could be part of the evaluation process. Now, the question is that since you are going to involve these all of them in the process, okay, how this kind of evaluation plays? This is known as 360 degree evaluation. When we are talking about 180 degree, it is only 3 where individual is there is subordinates are there and only his superiors are there. So, this is known as 180 degree right. It is always good to include more and more stakeholders in the process and that is why it is advisable to move to more 360 degree appraisal because it is going to be very very comprehensive where you get feedback about the performance from different stakeholders. So, what we are going to discuss now is what is 360 degree appraisal, how it happens, what are its drawbacks, how we can make it more effective and successful right. And that is why we are going to discuss this 360 degree appraisal and this is also known as a multi rater system because you, as you have seen there is a number of individual or stakeholders who are involved in the process. It is not done only by the individual as in case of self appraisal right or it is not done by the immediate supervisor right in the traditional system. But this is more effective in the sense that you get feedback from a number of sources right. For example, in our system we follow a 180 degree system evaluation where the individual who is going to evaluate his performance like we do our self appraisal. Then students are going to evaluate give feedback about the performance and then our seniors or the immediate supervisors also look at our performance. So, in our case it is 180 degree appraisal, but um, most of the industries today follow a um, more advanced approach and that is why they have moved to what you call a 360 degree appraisal where they are getting feedback from a set of stakeholders who could have a stake or could be related with the job. Now, if you look at this 360 degree evaluation there is something like this. Now, you can see who are the involved who are the people who are going to be involved right. right? So, who are the people who are going to be involved here? Now, now you can say it managers right then direct reports your subordinates then your peers and also your 
clients. Now, if you look at this, this is what we know as 360 degree appraisal where a number of stakeholders are involved. Now, each one of them are going to evaluate on different accounts. Right? For example, managers has different dimensions for evaluation, peers are going to evaluate on different dimensions. Client and customers are direct reports or your immediate subordinates are going to evaluate you on different dimensions. Some of these dimensions could be common in nature, some of these dimensions could be different. For example, when it comes to say a leadership, right? your manager can also evaluate you on this account, your subordinate staff also report you on this account because you are going to provide him leadership. Right? And then manager sees that what kind of leadership you provide to your subordinates. Say for example, communication is a common dimension across all these dimensions. So, if you look at this, you will find that there are 4 or 5 factors like communication, customer focus, accountability, right, result orientation or self management. This is related to the managers, related to the peers, we have communication, focus, result orientation and flexibility. Right? Then related to clients, again we have communication, customer focus, professionalism, service delivery because you are providing the certain services, so are going to measure on these account. Your subordinates are going to measure on your customer focus, communication, what kind of leadership you provide them, right? whether you help them to achieve goals or not or result orientation. Now, if you look at the dimensions against which they you are going to be evaluated, some of them are common like communication comes customer focus and but some of them are different. right? So, this gives you an account of a mo more comprehensive feedback about the performance of the individual and that is why many companies today want employees to see that how they are being evaluated through different stakeholders. Now, if you look at some of the dimensions that I have been talking about like communication, customer focus, result orientation, leadership, goal achievement and these kind of things, it includes both behavior as well as results. So, behavior is major, major to competencies which has certain indicators. right? So, it also addresses certain other issues like your listening ability, your planning ability, whether you have been able to set goals for yourself and your subordinates or not. These are more objective things or less objective you can say, but similarly how good you are working as a team, what is your character and strength, how what kind of leadership you provide to your subordinates. right? So, there could be a number of factors against which you are going to be measured and then you also get feedback on these accounts from uh, different stakeholders. right? So, 360 degree is more comprehensive feedback system where a set of evaluators are going to look at your performance. Some of the dimensions that is used in this case are common, some of the dimensions that is used here is different. right? Now, if you look at this, when you are not necessary that you move to a 360 degrees feedback system. And in many organizations, you will find that especially in progressive organizations that they are implementing only it for the managerial cadre employees. right? They are not implementing it for shop floor employees, for shop floor or blue collar employees or those who are working at a lower level, they do not go for 360 degree evaluation. But for managers, they go for what you call 360 degree measurements, because they have a subordinate, they have a senior, they are interacting with the customers outside the world or internally they have peers against who are going to be part of the evaluation. But before you move to a 360 degree evaluation process, you have to see that are you ready for this kind of evaluation, whether people agree for this kind of evaluation or not, because traditionally they have been uh, looking at evaluations either done by the individual itself or the supervisors. right? So, you need to create and develop a such, such a system, a performance management system where you can really involve the agreement of the people, so that the people are ready for this kind of system. right? Since you are going to include a number of stakeholders, so you they should know that okay, they are going to be part of the process, they also know that how they are going to reevaluate, otherwise there could be error in the evaluation. We have already talked about error in rating, which could cause a havoc for the rating, because that is how your performance is decided. right? So, there are certain considerations on the account of the organization, 
certain considerations on the account of the individual who are going to be part of the evaluation process, right. So, before you implement make sure that these things are done, right. And whether organization feel that people have a very positive response or attitude towards this kind of evaluation process. If people are not ready, then it is not possible. I give an example uh, where I was involved in e evaluating the 360 degree feedback that was given by the managers. It is a steel company and it is it's something like this happened. Okay. It is a steel company which was not doing well okay. and they were really um, import, uh, uh, apprehensive to see that how company is doing well and especially what the managers are doing. So, they had uh, around 120 managers at different level starting with the vice president of the company to the general managers to the deputy general managers this, this is the rank then they had general managers then the AGMs then they had senior managers right then they had assistant managers. So, around across 6 to 7 ranks ok there were around 120 people ok who are working in this company. Now, the company was doing a evaluation process that was from their supervisors. So, the assistant manager was evaluated by the senior manager and that is how this process was going on. So, each one was evaluated by his immediate supervisor ok. But the company was really interested to see that how well these people are doing and for that they were not happy with the kind of evaluation system that they have been using like using the immediate supervisors for the evaluation process right. So, what they did they identified each of these positions are especially cadres for the management side and see that if they are going to have a multi rated feedback or a 360 degree feedback then what happens. So, for VP I am just giving one example the head of the company or the CEO was involved then the general manager was involved and general managers you know that general managers were the number of general managers. So, there are 4 general managers then there are 2 there are 3 VPs right and there were certain uh, external clients there were 2 right. So, 4 general managers 1 vice president 3 peers and 2 customers were involved in the process ok and they were supposed to give feedback on a number of dimensions. Some of these dimensions were common in nature some of these dimensions were different and they were communicated the dimensions against which they are going to evaluate the performance of vice president for a particular function right say production. So, there are 4 general managers working in that particular department which are supposed to give then there are 3 other uh, vice presidents who are supposed to give as peers right then there are external customers with whom he used to interact and the vice president of the company and the president of the company. So, the president whose number was only 1. So, for 1 person how many evaluations you have 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 10 evaluations on common dimensions as well as different dimensions. So, when we try to look into this we found that in many cases not all of them had responded it means that feedback was not given by all of them right. So, one problem that we identified ok less number of responses less response and there are lot of variations in the responses these are the two common problems that we, have, we could identify in this particular company right. Another problem that we identified was related to rating ok. The rating the range of rating was 3 to 3.5 in all cases out of 5 ok. So, we took up each case and this is how we looked into it and then we tried to identify problems related to 360 degree feedback. The idea here was to see that whether people really know how to evaluate, what are the dimensions against which they are going to evaluate, what kind of responses ca are coming up, what kind of errors they are making ok. Because if it is not coming probably the company would not be in a position to see 
how well each one of them performing and how well uh, each one of them are being perceived by different stakeholders in the process. Okay. So, th the two major problems that I am talking about here is like uh, the number of responses that were received. For example, for a VP only one came forward to give feedback. Okay. All the response from the uh, uh, VPs were more or less similar, uh, other VPs were similar. The client respond, uh, response were totally different and then they try to look at this feedback and try to relate with the performance of these individuals and they could find that there is a positive relationship between the feedback and the kind of performance that they have achieved. The idea here was that let us have a more comprehensive evaluation or feedback of all the managers in the organization of all 20 managers and see that how it could be improved. So, that we can plan the development for these individuals, so that they are able to perform well and then they contribute to the performance of the organization. Okay. So, what we suggested based on this that <coughs> you clearly identify those dimensions against which the performance is to be evaluated for each of the positions, who are going to be the stakeholders for each of these positions, what are the common factors against which they are going to evaluate, what could be the separate factors against which is to be evaluated. Then we also told them that look you need to be trained so that you are not going to make any error, you are not going to be biased in your evaluation because all these factors came in when it comes to evaluation because most of the VPs when they try to uh, go for peer rating were rated them as very good, but when it comes to customer they rated them as bad. right? So, from this experience what we can suggest is that you have to see whether you are really ready to go for a 3 secretary feedback system or not and whether people are trained to do this kind of job and the kind of attitude people are having towards this kind of system. For example, down the line many of them were not ready to give any kind of response because they were having fear of insecurity. right? So, we have to avoid these kind of things and that is why it is very very important to see that when you are going to consider a 360 degree evaluation process make sure that organization is ready, people are ready, uh, ready and trained and they have a positive attitude and they should be trained on how to go about evaluating the performance of the people. Moving further how we are going to measure the performance, you are not going to measure them on the results or other things, but these could be some of the criteria that could be used for measuring the performance of the people right, how they manage and lead change, okay. what is their own identity a personal brand, how they are known as an individual, right? they, whether they know about the uh, what the organization is doing about the commercial awareness, the products and services that the organization offers, about their strategic thinking, how they build relationships, so the relationship is very very important, how they coach and develop others, right? in what way they are going to contribute and develop the organization, okay? how they manage their own performance and others performance whether they have business skills, knowledge and skill about the organization products and services. So, if you look at 360 degree feedback system, it is not evaluating in the employee performance on those outcomes, but you have to say that these parameters are considered because they are more important. The basic idea here is that this 360 degree lead, uh, feedback is done to develop leaders. So, that you know that how the person is viewed from different stakeholders and what needs to be done to improve himself so that, so that he comes out as a capable leader who contributes to the growth and development of others. So, what kind of questions that could be asked like what elements of your job do you find difficult, right? what do you consider to be your most important achievements, what elements of your job uh, interest you most, right? what actions you are required to take to improve your performance in your current position not only about you, but your boss because you are evaluating your boss and right. What are the things that you do not like, what are the things that you like about the organization, so you are getting feedback about the organization also, right. How was your past performance, right. Then what do you think is the most uh, important thing that you have done in the past, right. Uh, what are the things that you are going to do in the next year, right. What kind of work or job would you like to take up in the short term as well as long term, right what kind of training and learning experiences you would like to have. So, the idea is that based on this 360 degree feedback you get a more comprehensive evaluation of the individual 
which could be linked with his growth and development. The example that I have given this uh, steel company where I did this evaluation, I tried to identify the problem performance related problem through 60 degree feedback, we very clearly suggested that okay, what needs to be done. For example, we say that okay, based on this feedback, we can say that yes, people need to be trained, they need to develop a positive attitude. Okay. The feedback related to the customer was not good, external customers. So, that, that is where they need to be trained or they need to go for certain learning experiences, they should so that they know how they are going to deal with their customers. right? They should provide clear leadership, good leadership to their subordinates because that was lacking, because supervisor subordinate relationship was not good. Okay. So, these are the problems which came into the fore, which helped the management to decide what needs to be done in terms of learning and development activities or the development plan of the employees. You remember we talked about the employee development plan. So, 360 degree technique is a good way to look at what individuals have, what they do not have right, based upon the comprehensive feedback and then you decide what kind of development plan can we have. Right. So, it has advantage for everybody, supervisors, managers and organizations everyone. Now, if you look at uh, the advantage for the employees, because since it is going to be comprehensive, comprehensively uh, evaluated, so you get collect information from different sources about the employees, provided they provide an honest assessment. If the, the assessment is not honest from the different stakeholders, then it is not good. Right? Because you are involving different stakeholders to make sure that the assessment is good. Right? Make sure that it is confidential. Right? If you are providing confidential input, then it is good, otherwise it becomes a disadvantage. Then make sure that this feedback helps employees to grow and develop, understand their strength and weaknesses and how they are going to develop it. Right? And this information should not be used for by superiors for taking certain administrative decisions for, but for looking at it for the development of the individual. Now, if you look at advantage for the organization, right? Organization also comes to know about you, so he can plan about the development of your uh, the individual. He can see that what kind of culture is required, what kind of structure would be required, what kind of leadership and managerial capability need to be developed among the individuals, right? So, there could be a number of advantages because you are getting feedback from different sources, right? So, what is the strength, what are, what are the weaknesses, right? How you can uh, uh, trigger powerful changes in the organization because you know that if the, manage, uh, the organization is not performing because of the leadership problem or the culture problem. So, you can bring about certain initiatives to change these kind of things. For example, if you find the structure of the organization is uh, a bottleneck or the culture is weak. Okay? So, you can go for restructuring the organization, you can uh, go for developing a more uh, uh, transforming the culture of the organization. So, because it, it could be related to the performance. So, these are some of the advantages that we can have related to what you call the organization. Now, how supervisor is going to be benefited out of it? Because see supervisor is the person who is in direct contact in relationship with the individual concern. Right? So, he knows how well the individual is performing. So, he is involved in the accurate assessment and see that how his assessment varies from the assessment of others especially on the common dimensions. Right? For example, in uh, you remember in that example we had taken two uh, common factors like leadership communication. Right? So, the supervisor is going to look at his, his assessment and how subordinates assess him right? and whether there is a differences or not because it is possible there are discrepancies across these stakeholders in their rating and that becomes a big problem. right? Even in the steel company this had become a big problem because we could find discrepancies in the rating. This discrepancy may be, uh, be, be due to their ignorance because they do not know how to go for the rating or they may be biased that could also be a problem. So, ignorance and bias may crop in right? and that is what is very, very important because it eliminates accusations, accusations of favoritism. So, if he has done a good job of rating without any error and others are also rating him similarly, then the supervisor would be in a position to say that yes, his assessment is very, very accurate right? and it provides more objectivity to the evaluation process right? and this help managers to decide what needs to be done further. 
in terms of employee development, in terms of performance planning or in terms of deciding about the development plan for the individual. right? Because now he has data to support or refute his claim related to the performance. So, if he has data support to his claim then probably you can say that the ratings are consistent across these stakeholders then there is no problem. But if the ratings are not consistent across stakeholders then supervisor would has to defend his rating that why he has rated him like that. right? So, it is very very important to ensure that these kind of things does not happen. So, there there could be certain issues related to this right? because uh, supervisor miss, uh, might miss out certain things which has not been uh, evaluated by him, but uh, others are going to look at it. right? Peer opinion can change the behavior. So, you get feedback from your peers about yourself, your behavior, your competencies uh, and that feedback help you to change yourself. So, uh, but it depends upon how you take it, okay? whether you take it constructively then it is good then try go for change, but you try if you try to be defensive, uh, defensive and think that he is trying to criticize you then you take in a different way. So, both way your behavior is going to change about your peers. Right? Then you have to see that this a kind of appraisal is most expensive because you need more time and resources to conduct this kind of analysis. Right? So, that is why many companies do not go for this kind of evaluation and they try to choose something that is less costly, okay? but is more dependable. But this is highly dependable, but a little more expensive. Right? Sometimes what happens the evaluation is not done properly okay? or misapplied to training costs. So, you think that the person has not done and then you send him to training. So, it becomes a cost for, for, for the organization okay? because multi rating feedback is more diverse in the sense that you are involving a set of Hindu stakeholders who have might their own needs and expectations that they want to meet with the individual and if it is not met then there could be discrepancy in the rating. right? So, everyone who is going to be part of the system of this 360 degree system has to see that they have a very clear understanding to further process for developing a common language. So, the idea here is that you allow them only to rate on those factors which are going to be common, right? because the weight is based on these common factors is going to decide the kind of performance that the individual has. Now, look at this what kind of discrepancy is here. Say for individual here it is here you have four stakeholders in the process. Okay. This person has provided a positive rating, this has provided a negative rating, this person has a negative rating and this person this person has a negative, this person has a positive rating. How to resolve this issue? This is one case. Another case may be where the individual has a positive rating, negative rating, positive rating from external stakeholders and negative rating from peers. So, these are the cases where you find that discrepancies are there in the rating. So, how are we going to resolve these kind of discrepancies through training on rating to minimize error right training on rating technique technologies so that they are able to reduce the error right so it is very very important to see that there is no discrepancy across rating are these if there are dis discrepancies you need to justify it how these why these discrepancies are there in the rating by different stakeholders right Moving further, now you have trained the supervisors, you have identified the dimensions, the competencies against which the person is going to be evaluated and finally, you are going to evaluate it. Okay. So, the process is something like this, you plan about 360 degree evaluation, what are the dimensions, who is going to be part of the process, then you start with pilot testing, do it for one department. And if you find that it is giving the desired result, it is successful, you are able to really accurately measure the performance, then you move to the entire organization, implement it organization wide, 
then once it is implemented augmentation wide okay see whether it is successful or not get feedback about the system okay make changes depending upon the kind of feedback that you have got okay and then you go for replanning so it is very very important that when you are going to implement 360 degree technique make sure that everything is right at each and every step so getting feedback is very very important because that is how you decide whether the person has performed well or not because you are getting feedback from multi sources right and each one of uh, each one of them giving ratings on different accounts right because your supervisor is going to rate you on different accounts compared to your subordinates okay so make sure that you have been able to identify it you have you a question as which which is going to rate individual according to what kind of behavior they are observing because subordinates will look to you for different kind of behaviors seniors are going to look at different kind of behaviors peers are going to look at different kind of behaviors so you sh you should know that how are going to assess right and make sure that you have a culture which supports this kind of activity right so it is always good to go for a pilot before you implement it finally then there are validity concerns right and that happens because the raters are not trained to evaluate properly or effectively right so if there are biases which are cropping in because of the raters then that might either inflate the rating or it can deflate the rating right so make sure that it is kept anonymous with have good safeguard so there is no fear among peers as well as subordinates who are going to be part of the process okay so you get more accurate rating or good rating now many cases it has been found that it does not work well it did i did not work well right and it has in fact adversely affected the motivation and performance of the employees right since it is a process you have to ensure that there is a supportive climate Com commitment from the top management hr systems are linked with that in terms of they are able to provide enough time and resources it is planned well and the feedback process is accurate okay but if it is not done then this system is not going to work well right so it is very very important to ensure that these kind of take uh, say precautions are taken up right otherwise your security system is not going to pass the test right look at some of the factors which are important for the success of 360 de degree feedback okay first explain it to all the stakeholders what this system is why we need this kind of system why everybody need to be involved in the system how the system is going to be executed and implemented what are the benefits of all the concerned parties so you discuss the advantage to the management to the organization to the seniors everyone right then next don't make it a part of the compensation disconnect it from the compensation right don't think that it is going to be used for at certain administrative purposes it should be used only for the development of the employees right so so if you have made it clear probably you have more acceptance from the employees to be a part of it right and make sure that it it is going to be used to get information related to the job that the person is doing and what kind of processes that he is performing right so make sure that assessors know the purpose and process of doing it why they are going to do it conduct a structured feedback workshop before actually you take up so that you communicate them how the system is going to be used so you can minimize certain problems related to cognition of the employees supervisor problems you also provide them rated training right that how evaluation should be done so that they are able to minimize the error right okay and then how they are going to use which method they are are you going to use a rating scale a critical incident or behavioral checklist so which method you are going to use for evaluation that is to be identified and finally the idea is you are not going to look at the individual but you are going to look at those dimensions the competencies which the individual ha has and the kind of result that he is going to obtain so you are going to evaluate on these two accounts to the individual and then if you go for it probably 360 degree is going to be more successful and effective so make sure that your organization is committed to it okay they look at the value creation process through this that how this is going to help to develop leaders and based on this feedback are you going to bring about necessary changes in the system structure culture of the organization then the trust issue this is very very important because when the different stakeholders are involved the kind of interpersonal trust is required is very much important then culture what kind of culture you have 
but then you have a culture where you are providing honest feedback to individual, more constructive feedback instead of being yes or saying yes or no, that is not good. So, make sure that you have a culture which is going to support honest feedback, right. And then the top management must be able to lead this kind of thing, so that people come forward to participate in this kind of process and that is how it is going to be very, very successful. Thank you very much.